So I'm going to explain Java generics. According to Wikipedia, generics are a facility of generic programming that were added to the Java programming language in 2004 within Java version 5. They were designed to extend Java's type system to allow a type or method to operate on objects of various types while providing compile time type safety. The Java Collections framework supports generics to specify the type of object stored in a collection instance. Now, an example of a collections class is an array list. Now, say we've looked at array lists before, but what we could do is we can define a list my things equals new array list. Like this and then in my things we can add whatever objects we want so we can add my things add and then we could add a new string one and we could add a new string two we could also add another data type for example an integer so now we can loop over the things that we've got in our array list. So for um, object O in my things, system out print O. So if we run this, we get one, the string one, the string two, and the integer three. Now, we've got warnings here now that before Java um, version five, before 2014, that would be quite a normal, or, or that would be an acceptable thing to do. What you would do really is you would remember what you're putting into my thing. So you it wouldn't really make much sense well, it may make some sense, but it probably doesn't make much sense to be adding two strings and an integer into a list because whatever you're going to do with that list later, um, they're, they're incompatible types. So what, what you could do later is you could get the objects out and you could check if it's an instance of string, do something to it. If it's an instance of integer, do something else to it. But it's very unlikely you actually want a list of just random objects. So what you do is in um, this uh, sort of less than and greater than bracket, you can specify what you want in your list. So you could say, I want it to be a list of strings. And here you can either put just the brackets again, or you can, I like to just repeat the definition. So the list of strings is a new array list of strings. Now we've got an error on the third one because that's an integer. So now it's insisting that we can only put at compile time, i.e. before we run, it's insisting that we can only put strings into that array list. So now when we run one, two, three, it's pretty much the same, but the this insistence here is that we're only going to put strings in that array list. So now we'll have a look at how this works from the other side, how we can write our own generic classes. Okay, so I'm going to write a class. Uh, I'll just write it into this file, my class. And this, in this class, we're going to have a add object method. Well, I'll do it in the constructor, my class object O. Okay, I'll give this class a method get object. So here I'm going to save the object here and here I'm going to return the object 
and I'll also give it a third method returning void print object and that's just going to system out print line whatever O is now I'm going to create a my class I'll just get rid of all this and I'm going to initialize this with one but right, I'm getting this error because I'm not um, I'm in the static methods still so So I'm going to create my class with the string one and then I'm going to say my class print object. Control shift and O just to get rid of those um, unwanted imports now. Now we run this and we get one. So we create my class with the string one and we print object. Right, so now I'm going to make this my class a generic class so that when we add whatever object to it, we can insist that it's going, we're going to define down here in the same way as we did for array list what type of object this my class can take. So in my class, in the same type of bracket again, we're going to put a generic type. Now it's typical to choose T but we can put anything that isn't a keyword, but I'll stick to T for now. So there we've defined our generic type and then we can use this T everywhere where we would be using object. So there the object is now of type T, which is not a real type. It's just what's defined in there. When we construct the class, we construct it with something of type T and the get object method will also return something of type T. So now we can say my class string equals new my class and we can put the string into it. And another thing I can do is I can fetch a string out of it. So I can say string my string equals my class dot get object and the compiler is clever enough to know so if I just system out print that there now the compiler is clever enough to know because we've defined it as a string class that it is a string class so this program now is gonna print one twice So the first time it's printing it because of the call to there and the second time it's printing it because we fetched it out there. Now if I was to say that this my class took integer objects, we're going to have a few problems. Firstly the problem is in the constructor and the problem is the constructor for that class with a string is undefined because it needs to take an integer now and also the problem here we can't convert from the integer coming out of this class to the string now i'm going to make it my class it's going to add two numbers together now i'm going to call these numbers t and v so I'm, now I'm going to add two generic types, T and V, and I'm going to save two numbers, number one, number two, T and V. I'm going to construct it. With the parameters. And I'm going to make a method add numbers, 
which is just going to return, uh, it's going to system out print the two numbers added together. And now we've got a problem that we can't do, we can't add two um, unspecified objects together. So what we can do is we can say something about these these types. We can it's called bounded types, where we say that T and V must extend certain classes. So if we look at the Java doc for the class number. Um, all different types of number extend this class. So double extends number, uh, long, integer, short, float. All our number types extend the number class. So what I'm going to say here is T extends number and V extends number. Then here I can treat them as numbers. And I can use the methods in the number class, so I'll convert to double value to add them together. So now I can say my class and I can say I'm going to give it two integers maybe. And I can call my class add numbers. So I'm going to add the integers one and two together. And we get the sum three. The point is, is now I cannot put something which isn't a number into here and it's checked at compile time. But what I can do is I can make another my class and this time I'm going to add a double to an integer. Five, and then so the first one is adding two integers together the second one is adding a double to an integer now the third thing uh, to learn about generics so the first one was that we can just specify these types the second one is we can bound the types by saying what it extends and the third thing is wildcards now if I want to have a list of these my class objects. Let me say list of my class. My classes. Use new array list of my class. So now it's asking us these my class we're saying that these are raw data types but we can say we can put a wildcard in here to say that we don't what types we're going to use in the my class so we can use wildcards so now my classes add my class my classes add my class to so there we've got a list of my classes and if I take away this bounded expression here so we just say the my class can contain any two object types I have to get rid of the add numbers method for now So it's not taking numbers now, it's just containing 
any two objects. So I'll make a third my class and this one I'm going to store a string in an integer. My class three and I'll add my class three to our list of my classes. Now I can put a constraint on this here so I can say I want this list to be a list of my classes. The objects in them, I don't care. I just do the first one. I want this one to extend number. So this is a list of my classes. The first type is bounded to extend number and the second type can be anything. And we can see we've got a compile time error on the third one because that my class doesn't fit this description. So the one here is a string and this list can only be um, my classes of two number types. So that's uh, basically how um, generics work. Um, it can take a little bit of getting used to. I really didn't like it to begin with. It took some time to see the benefit of it. Um, I had an argument with a, a computer science student in Cambridge about how uh, I didn't think it was necessary because if you have some sort of array, you should know what you're putting in it and there's no need to check. But since then, I have have made use of generics and it is a very useful feature, so it's useful to know. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.